So guys, we have a brand new patch for Cyberpunk 2077. Patch 2.02. .02. Today guys, we check out every single change that has happened and come with this new patch. How's it going guys? My name's DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out. And if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. So patch 2.02 .02 for Cyberpunk and Phantom Liberty is being rolled out on PC, PS5 and the Xbox Series X and S. They state it includes quest and gameplay fixes for the most common issues as well as other general improvements. So let's get into it guys and they state Phantom Liberty specific rebalance the time limit for vehicle contracts. Yes this was a pain in the ass. I mean I've done a ton of these vehicle contracts when it comes to the time limit I've barely been successful so this is great. Various fixes for animations, lightings, scenes, VFX and more. Fixed collision issues in various locations that could cause players to get stuck. Okay so when starting a new game and skipping ahead to Phantom Liberty, quests that were simulated as completed would now be visible in the journal. Fixed an issue where the Quadra Sport R7 Vigilante wasn't available for purchase on the Autofixer website in some circumstances. Yes, I had this problem. Fixed an issue where roadblocks were present in front of Dogtown Gates, therefore preventing entry. Sasquatch's hammer will now appear in the vendor's stock at the stadium's black market if it was originally missed after the boss fight with Sasquatch. Pretty cool. Dex's body will now spawn in the landfill on saves where the option to skip ahead to Phantom Liberty was selected. It will now be possible to pick up Jackie's guns from the altar of the Ai Coyote Kojo on saves where the option to skip ahead to Phantom Liberty was selected. That is a great, great change. Fixed an issue where a particular placeholder pop-up would be displayed on the Xbox Series X and S instead of an error message regarding Phantom Liberty's installation. Addicted to Chaos fixed an issue where it could become impossible to complete the quest if the stash is looted before receiving the message with the code. Black Steel in the Hour of Chaos fixed an issue where under specific circumstances the quest could remain active even after failing it by not following the traces left by Sunbird. Okay, so Firestarter, it will no longer be possible to disassemble the stadium security data shard after looting it from Hansen's body therefore blocking quest progression. Firestarter, it will now be possible to pick up the Bald Eagle weapon after siding with Songbird. Wow, that is a great, great change and I cannot wait to test that. Gig, Roads to Redemption, fixed an issue where the door leading to the stadium's weapon factory could be opened by accident earlier in Firestarter, which later interfered with gig progression and could lock the player behind the door. High Hole Silver Lining, Fix an issue where the objective leave heavy hearts might be marked complete after leaving heavy hearts. I've seen that face before. Fix an issue where the go to the vantage point objective might be marked complete after reaching the vantage point. Moving heat. Fix an issue where it wasn't possible to get in the car because it didn't spawn. Moving heat. Fix an issue where the quest could remain stuck on the leave with the car objective even after getting in the car and leaving the area. Run this town. Fix an issue where the black sapphire could become inaccessible because of closed shutters if the player had triggered combat in the lobby at the end of You Know My Name. Run this town. Fix an issue where it wasn't possible to meet Mr. Hands in Heavy Hearts because the elevator was disabled. I actually had this issue. I remember having this issue and I just reloaded my game and it fixed it. Run this town. Fix an issue where the character menu and fast travel remain blocked after removing Aguila's imprint. Run this town. Fix an issue where the journal incorrectly suggested that the player had to complete Gig Spina Jungle to continue the quest when, in fact, Gig Heaviest of Hearts was required instead. Somewhat damaged. Fixed an issue where the Cerebus wouldn't spawn until the corridor chase scene if the player fired a weapon in a specific spot near the Terminal Sierra. Somewhat damaged. Removed the attribute check from doors when locked in the observation room and adjusted the objective to make it clearer that hiding from Cerebus is required to progress. Spider and the Fly. Fixed an issue where the boss fight with their Chimera might not start. Okay, never even knew that was a thing. The Damned. 
fix an issue where the quest objective disappeared after the meeting in the muff, uh, first blocking progress. The Killing Moon fixed an issue where it was possible to trigger the police system while driving to the spaceport. Things done changed. Fixed an issue where the screen could go black after calling the nurse. Okay. Tomorrow Never Knows fixed an issue where completing heroes made it impossible to ask Misty about the tarot cards. New person, same old mistakes. Fixed an issue where the door to Bill's hot dog stand was still closed for some players on 2.01. Okay, so on to quests and open world. Fixed an issue where the Quadris Type 66 Wingate wasn't available in a cool vehicle menu after being purchased. Okay, Johnny will no longer appear when collecting the reward for Trauma Drama prior to completing Act 1. The Trauma Team website will now be accessible on V's computer when the Killing in the Name quest is active. Be on the Brat Arreo. Fix an issue where beating Buck while having a micro generator cyberware equipped could block the completion of the quest. Gig, we have your wife. Fix an issue where the gig might not start after approaching the quest area. Life during wartime. Fix an issue where Panna might not get on the motorcycle and ride to the gas station if V got on it first. <laughs> wow. Path of Glory. V will no longer flatline after entering the Delamain AV. The Beast in Me. Fix an issue where it wasn't possible to shoot from the vehicle during the race. Okay, so now onto gameplay. Rebalance the stats of some weapons based on player feedback. The Malarium Arms 3516 received a buff. Recoil is easier to handle, even at low stamina, and damage was increased. Crafting specs for iconic weapons will now disappear after crafting the item. Wow. Added stats to the tooltip of mono wire that were missing. Fixed an issue where it was possible to duplicate junk items. Say what? Say what? They fixed it. No way. Bullets now deal damage correctly when shooting through glass. Fix an issue where it was possible to easily obtain tier 5 skill shards early in the game. Their prices have also been adjusted all my days. Disable the bait quick hack on enemies standing at the edge of an area they're not supposed to leave. Fix an issue where the day air recycler perk recovered from the base ram cost without taking ram reduction perks into account, thus recovering more ram than was actually spent. Fix some specific instances where crowd NPCs could clip through vehicles while walking. Fix an issue that could cause elevators in various quests to spawn on an incorrect floor if a save load was performed after they started moving. Fix an issue where the appearance of V's hands in first person perspective might not change correctly after installing or uninstalling armed cyberware. Giving money to a homeless person will no longer lower your NCPD wanted level. How oh, wow, that's a I didn't even know that, that's amazing. Okay, so onto PC specific. Selecting default graphics settings should now pick the prior quick preset based on your hardware and according to the latest system recommendations. Introduced a mechanism for detection of mismatched or corrupted scripts, which are caused by outdated mods or file corruption during the update installation. It will now show a descriptive error message and close the game instead of resulting in a crash. Console specific. Increase the save.data internal buffer size to 15 MIB without increasing the overall max save size. Refactored the save in progress to not overwrite a save until we know that the data is valid. This helps prevent save corruption in case there's not enough space for saving. Okay, so miscellaneous. Various optimization, performance improvements and crash fixes. Fix an issue where some achievements or trophies could unlock after loading a pre 2.0 save on 2.01, despite not meeting the criteria for them. Please note that this fix will not reset already unlocked achievements. Fix an issue where under specific circumstances, a warning detected message could be displayed instead of a completed when having your vehicle scanned or when connecting your personal link. Fixed an issue of blinking trash that could sometimes be visible when crawling out of the landfill in playing for time. Fix a misaligned glitch effect on Jimmy. Fix an issue where NPCs could appear stretched out when affected by explosions or the savage sling ability. 
fixed an issue where tooltips on the map and interaction prompts for renting apartments show double the actual price. Blocked cross progression from uploading saves bigger than the max save size limit on consoles to prevent crashes and issues when importing such saves. And remastered their voiceover to improve audio quality in German, simplified Chinese and Japanese. So that is it guys, that are the complete patch notes for patch update 2.02. .02. Now we am disappointed to see that there is no fix for the uh, V's wool stash where certain weapons would not appear. I mean I'm hoping they improve this or sort it out because for me it's seriously annoying. I mean I've got all the weapons, I've got them all stashed but only half of them appear. I have no idea what's going on, it's just wild. But hopefully they fix that soon. But there we have it guys, patch 2.02 .02 for Cyberpunk. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one.